Bergen International, your number one source for chemical foaming agents. Today, we're going to do a quick overview of process considerations you need to make in order to successfully foam in any extrusion process. You can foam any profile or sheet line by making these changes. But before we start, I want to quickly discuss how chemical foaming agents work. CFAs, as they are commonly called, are supplied as either a pellet or powder and are made of active compounds that generate gas upon thermal decomposition. Generally, the gas generated is either carbon dioxide or nitrogen or a combination of the two. This gas then dissolves in the melt due to the high pressure in the process. As the melt exits the dye and undergoes a sudden pressure drop, the gas wants to come out of solution. As the gas expands out, so does the melt, thus creating a foamed part. As we just mentioned, the two most critical parameters in foam extrusion are temperature and pressure. You need to ensure full decomposition of our CFA by controlling the temperature. Then, ensure that the pressure is high enough to keep that gas dissolved in the melt until the material exits the dye. So, why foam? The addition of a CFA into an extrusion process allows you to reduce the weight or density of your parts. This reduces your resin usage and increases the throughput by increasing your line speed. It can also aid in changing the durometer of the material. Most thermoplastic material can be foamed with ease, which includes olefins, styrenics, PVC, and a wide variety of engineering resins that include TPEs. Before you start, you want to ensure that all vent ports are plugged. A minimum of 24 to 1 L over D is recommended for any foam process. Additionally, you want to avoid screw designs that have a large pressure drops across them and avoid the use of screen packs. Should a screen pack be required, we advise the use of a coarse mesh. Accurate dosing is key to a successful foaming process as typical letdown ratios range between 0.5 and 2%. We recommend a dedicated loss-in weight feeder directly at the feed throat, but any method that ensures accuracy would be sufficient. Failing to control the feed will result in process instability and inadequate foaming. We recommend that you run a bell-shaped curve on the temperature profile. We do this for several reasons. First, we want to ensure full decomposition of the CFA. Secondly, we want to start to cool the barrels just before the dye to help improve the melt strength of the resin. This helps control the foaming process and is critical when foaming resins such as polypropylene and nylon. It is also important that the feed barrel be cooled to ensure the CFA does not decompose before a melt seal is formed. Finally, we want to be sure to compensate for the expansion of the foam on all downstream equipment. For example, you'll need to make an adjustment on your puller speed in extrusion profile applications, while you'll need to adjust the die or roller gaps in sheet extrusion applications. Call us or visit us online to learn more. Bergen International is an expert in chemical foaming agents.